to learn about color. Well, okay. First, let's search our world for colors. We'll see them at home, at school, in nature, on our clothes, and in our artwork. Now, we're going to create a color wheel and learn how to mix colors. A color wheel will show us the primary colors and the secondary colors. First, we'll paint the three primary colors. Red! Yellow! Blue! You can't imagine how many different colors you can make just by mixing together these three little primary colors. Now, let's paint the secondary colors on the color wheel. Who knows what the secondary colors are? Orange, green, and violet. How right you are. Red mixed with yellow makes... Orange. Blue mixed with yellow makes... Green. Blue mixed with red makes... Violet. Absolutely correct. This is a perfect color wheel. Now look at the colors on this side. They are called warm colors because... They look warm, like the sun or fire. And the colors on the other side of the color wheel look... Cool, like water in a pool, the violet of twilight or the ocean. Now take another look at the primary and secondary colors in things that we see all the time. Fruits and vegetables. Leaves on trees. Our clothes. Some famous artists use bright primary and secondary colors, both warm and cool, in their art. We can surely see warm and cool colors in this oil painting by the artist Paul Gauguin. The young girls in his painting the two sisters, wear dresses in bright colors as they pose together by flowers on the warm yellow sand of a beach. They stand out from the dark, cool greenery of the background. Now in this painting, Landscape at Murnau, the Russian artist Vasily Kandinsky created a scene painted in bright, pure colors. Does the town in this painting look real to you? No. The colors are different from what we see in real life. Very good. This is an abstract painting. In abstract art, the images do not look real, like images in a photograph. Here is another abstract painting with bright colors. It's a portrait. Paul Clay, the artist who said he liked to take lines for a walk, uses the human face as his subject. The face is a circle and it is divided by colorful rectangles and squares representing a mask. It is the portrait of an actor who wears a mask and costume. The two circles must be his eyes peeking out of the holes in the mask. Yes, they are looking right back at you. Clay used his energy and imagination as an artist to create this playful portrait of the actor in costume. So, speaking of lively shapes and colors, there are many bright colors in this student work of art. When we compare the crayon turtle design to the painting by Kandinsky, we see that the two works of art are not realistic, but are abstract in their use of color. I think that maybe the student artist created the turtle shell in bright colors to make it different and unique. Here's another bright work of art. It's a mola, a design created with pieces of cloth sewn together with a needle and thread. Just look at all the colors. The Cunha Indians from the islands off Central America designed this mola to feature a certain creature. Know what it is? Looks like a bat to me. How right you are. It surely is the brightest bat I've ever seen. But check out this bright color design that in many ways looks like the mola. This is 15th century Arabic lettering that spells out a word in colors and sets of shapes. Wow! Colors and shapes for letters! I wish our words were written in colors and shapes like that. I could talk in colors. You know, colors can talk. All these bright colors remind me of a principle of design called emphasis. 
when you want to draw attention to a certain part of a work of art, you give it emphasis. We're going to see how color can say, hey, look at me. In this painting by John F. Weir, what draws your attention first? Be quick now. Where does your eye land first? The bright yellow fire. Everything else is dark. That fire really caught my eye. The painting is about steel workers making a long shaft of steel. The title of the painting is Forging the Shaft, a Welding Heat. That welding fire looks hot. Oh, yes, it does. The background is dark, and that bright yellow fire certainly gives the dark space emphasis. We can find color emphasis in nature, too. Some animals protect themselves by emphasizing their bright colors. It's called protective coloration. They use their color to scare off bigger animals that might eat them. Take a look at this caterpillar. I wouldn't want to tangle with it. And how about this little frog? It needs very bright colors to appear bigger than it is. This yellow and black frog really is dangerous because it is poisonous. The bright colors of these creatures do indeed make them seem stronger and fiercer than they really are. They use color for protection. I think you will have a lot of fun looking at colors and experimenting with color in your art. Create your own color wheel. Paint warm and cool colors and be sure to put emphasis in your own artwork.